In Las Vegas, among the multitude of hotels constructed for honeymooners, gamblers, and holidaymakers, is the magnificent Maxims, brainchild of millionaire Henry Lewin. This German-Jewish emigre arrived on American shores 48 years ago with nothing apart from his life. That he's alive at all is due to the selfless generosity of one man. It is amazing to me how many things you've done in your life which are so unique, so precious, so special, so momentous, and you want nobody to know. He says, people who I want to know do know. I am proud that I tell the story against his wishes even, because I think when a man is 90 years old and I'm 39 and some extra years, then uh, I think that I don't think I will have this opportunity again. Now everyone will finally have the opportunity to hear the amazing story of one of the world's most reluctant heroes. This is my knockout punch, Max. Happy birthday. As Max Schmeling prepares to celebrate his 90th birthday, we reflect on the career of Germany's greatest boxer and one of that country's finest citizens. In 1930, Schmeling traveled to New York to fight Jack Sharkey for the vacant world heavyweight title. Jack's jab seems to be bothering the German champion. Now keep an eye on Sharkey's left hand. The fight ended in controversial circumstances in the fourth when Max couldn't continue following a low blow. For the first time, the heavyweight title was decided on a disqualification. Schmeling was the champ. Maxi was back in the States the following year for his first defense against American young Stribling. In Cleveland, Schmeling disposed of the challenger in the 15th round with a vicious right hand, proving beyond doubt that he was worthy of the heavyweight championship. A lightning fast right hand counter and Stribling is down. Too late. Max Schmeling wins by a sudden last round KO and proves his claim to the heavyweight championship. The boy from Brandenburg returned home to mother and the fatherland, a national hero. Schmeling was finally getting respect in the ring and his fan club was growing ever larger. No task was too onerous for this gentle giant. Maxi was a hero not just to Henry Lewin, but to every young boy in Berlin. This man is a champion, not in 1935. He's a champion for his whole life. A man who performed with quality outside the ring, the same than inside the ring. Well, that's the story of Max Schmeling. The story of Germany in the 1930s was of a nation striving to rebuild its strength and reputation. Schmeling, like the Hindenburg, which carried him on occasion to America, was a symbol of that renaissance. Consequently, a nation mourned in June 1932 when Max lost to Jack Sharkey, again in somewhat controversial circumstances. The Boston gob may have been lucky to get that decision, but a year later, fortune would desert him. Fortunately for Schmeling, his next opponent was the gifted but hopelessly undersized Mickey Walker. Time and again, the German's big right hand came crashing in, sending Walker to the canvas three times. Mickey seems to be recovering momentarily, but then turns to the canvas for the third knockdown. Schmeling is coming on again, but the bell sounds. Eventually, the American's corner was forced to step in to prevent any further punishment. But the punishment was on the other fist the next year, when Schmeling lost in New York to the other Max, Bear, who stopped him in the tenth round after a brutal onslaught. And the referee stops the fight. 
After such a fearful beating, Schmeling might easily have contemplated retirement. Archive films show a smiling 27-year-old marrying Annie Andre, one of Germany's best-loved actresses. And although mink and tobacco farms might not meet with approval today, back in the 30s, they kept Max in the money. There was, however, one boxing challenge which remained. That challenge would be a fight against the most terrifying heavyweight on the scene. Although he may not have been the champion of the day, unbeaten in 27 fights and winning 20 of them by KO, this lethal weapon was already being talked about in reverential tones as the greatest of all time. Joe Lewis was not yet 22, but prior to that June 1936 showdown, Max had detected a chink in the Alabaman's armor. Have you detected any particular weakness in the brown bomber? Yes, I did, but I won't tell you. Here in round four, it's still anybody's fight. Nobody expected Schmeling to test Lewis, but in round four, the German did something nobody had ever done. Another dynamite right. Lewis goes down. He put the brown bomber on the seat of his pants. Into the 12th round, and Lewis had nothing left to give. In one of the most stunning upsets in boxing history, Schmeling's tactic of drawing the Americans right and countering with his own had earned him the victory. Once more, he returned to a hero's welcome although the Germany of 1936 was very different to the Germany of 1931. This was a country under Nazi rule, and Goebbels' propaganda machine leapt into life to maximize the victory for the Nazis' own political and ideological gain. A German victory over an American, particularly a black American, was perfect fuel for the fascist fire. At a time when all over Germany, Jews and other so-called inferior beings were being routinely rounded up and imprisoned. Max, however, did not share the Führer's vision of Aryan supremacy, and at great personal risk, he began his own campaign to save the lost souls of the nation. He helped my father and his children, myself, in that case, at a time where he had no benefit. My father was not a rich man anymore. Everything was taken away from him. There was nothing this man could gain. On crystal night, November the 9th, 1938, my father asked Max Schmeling to take me into his house, and he took us for three days. He brought us back to our family in his car, and this car was three cars like this in Berlin, so everybody knew this was Max Schmeling. If this wouldn't have happened that night, I wouldn't be here tonight. He took a bigger chance than I or my father. And no Nazi is guilty of a crime if he is a Nazi like Max Schmeling. 1938, and Maxi was back in New York for a rematch with Lewis, who by now was the world champion. The fight had attracted enormous interest worldwide, pitting the power of the Third Reich against the forces of freedom and democracy. Unlike the war it foreshadowed, however, the outcome of this battle was never in doubt. Schmeling's humiliating first-round defeat inevitably cost him the patronage of the German leadership. Being gracious in defeat didn't help either. After proclaiming Joe the better fighter, he said, Sport is sport. It has nothing to do with hate. When war did finally break out, Schmeling dutifully signed with the Wehrmacht, although a parachuting accident seriously curtailed his frontline action. After the war, the 42-year-old attempted a comeback, but was unable to rekindle the old fire. He went into business in Germany, only retiring in 1993. In 1981, Max's great rival was buried with much pomp and civic splendor at Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia. Joe Lewis was 66 years old. But the magnificence of the Brown Bomber's send-off was in sharp contrast to the last years of his life, spent sick and close to destitution. Luckily, the Lewis family had a benefactor. I had a telephone call from Hamburg, and they told me that I would be very appreciative if you accept that I cable you a large amount of money. 
that you put in an envelope and all you have to do is go over there and give the widow of Joe Lewis, Mrs. Lewis, this envelope. I went over there and I was sitting next to Mrs. Lewis on the chair and I talked slowly saying, Mrs. Lewis, here's an envelope for Max Schmeling. Oh, she says, Henry, Max Schmeling, our true friend. You know we had nothing. The last 15 years we suffered. But a man who sent us money all the time, Max Schmeling. Maxi is our friend. In an age when sportsmanship, modesty, and generosity appear to be alien words to so many of our athletes, Max Schmeling is evidence of an age when people cared, enough to risk their lives for what they knew to be right. Steven Spielberg recently reminded the world of the heroism of Oscar Schindler. Henry Lewin would say his old friend Max deserves our recognition too. Max Schmeling, he did not do wrong and then made up for it. He did right, regardless of risk. There were more Schindlers than Schmelings. Schmeling is one of a kind. Schmeling is my hero, and Schindler has my admiration.